Darren Woodson was born as the youngest of four and moved to Maryvale, Arizona when he was eight. And from a young age, he was always on the move. He was always active, always been a quiet kid. He was called the quiet giant when he was in elementary school because he was taller than most of his schoolmates. Just didn't have much, a whole lot to say. That's his mother, Freddie Luke. The quiet giant was determined from a young age to play football. Here is Woodson himself. You know, I used to put weights in my pants to make the weight because I wanted to play when I was seven. At that time, Maryvale was home to four future NFL players. Darren Woodson, Philippi Sparks, Kevin Galbraith, and Kevin Minifield. Growing up in the projects, young men learned life lessons quickly. We're all from single moms. Tough, tough single moms that raised us in a way to be polite and be respectful and whatnot. And be scared of them. Hell, I'm, I'm still afraid of my mom to this day. So, and they poured into us too, man, at, at young ages and they kept us off the streets. Woodson attended Maryvale High School with Sparks and Galbraith. And at 15, attended an ASU football summer camp where they met ASU recruiting coordinator Don Bakke. First day I saw him move around at camp, I knew that we would be recruiting Darren Woodson. He just was, I thought, a spectacular athlete. Woodson's talent on the football field gave him confidence off the field, too. His friend and teammate, Philippi Sparks, explains. Darren's nickname in high school was Billy D. Williams. <laughs> because he's good looking, smooth, always smiling, Mr. Beautiful Body, you know. So he always had a job in the summers and stuff like that. Darren was always taking care of business. But while Woodson's skills on the field were worthy of a Division I scholarship, his skills in the classroom fell short. Bakke remembers meeting Woodson at Maryville High School. And I remember I met him outside the cafeteria, and I looked at the transcript, then I looked at him, I looked at the transcript, then I looked at him. He said, Coach, he says, something wrong. I said, Darren, there's not much right on this transcript. And I was shocked. I said, Darren, there are very few grades on here above a C, and there are a lot of grades below a C. And he wasn't that kind of young man. So it became evident that he would not be capable or able to predict and accept an NCAA scholarship. I mean, I can't blame my teachers at Maryville High. I can't blame my family members. Like, I had all the resources in the world. I just didn't apply myself. Sparks had similar academic issues his senior year and explains where they fell short. We are kids in high school just la 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 just going to school and doing our thing and not knowing about what we were supposed to do with our academic advisors of getting, you know, a well-rounded education or trying to move on to progress your career in athletics and school. Woodson had only two choices out of high school. He could have spent two years at a junior college and earn his associate's degree before transferring or spend his first year at ASU as a full-time student only. Woodson chose to attend ASU and did not play football for the first time in his young life. It was very frustrating. Uh, I did a lot of crying, man. I cried a lot. Without a scholarship, Woodson had to pay his own way. His mother, Freddie Luke, knew what she had to do. Okay, let's go borrow some money. So that's what we did. It just took off from there. For Woodson, how he thought others would see him drove him towards success. People on the outside who didn't know me just looked at me as, well, he's a dumb football player. He can't get his grades right. And that, that's the pride is what I had to overcome. But the only way to get over that embarrassment was to say, I'm going to show you that I can do this. And not only that, but I'm going to do it in, in three and a half, four years and move on. Don Bakke believes that moment changed Woodson's life. Because he decided in the moment, I'm going to be the best Darren Woodson I can be. Not just the best football player I can be. In the fall of 1988, Woodson was academically eligible to accept an NCAA scholarship. ASU teammate Kelvin Fisher remembers Woodson's presence on the team surprised many. I don't think a lot of guys on the team knew that he was on our team and he was just going to school. So a lot of guys was like, man, where did he come from? Who is that? After his first week, there was great debate among coaches about where to play Woodson. The linebacker coach wanted him. The secondary coach wanted him. 
The outside linebacker coach wanted him. The um, running back coach said he would like to have him. I was coaching the wide receivers, and I just threw it in there just to say, I'll take him too. So, I mean, we, we needed seven or eight Darren Woodsons at the time. Woodson became a defensive back for the Sun Devils. In his senior year, Woodson was elected team captain along with Kelvin Fisher. He was so well respected. Both of them were. And they were no-nonsense kind of people. They did their work, played hard, and wanted the best for their teammates and the program. Fisher explains their captain dynamic. It was almost like good cop, bad cop. Darren was kind of like the laid-back type, but he could pull the guy to the side and talk to him and, and say, hey, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Whereas I was the guy that was like, hey, man, this is what we're going to do. That was kind of the difference. So we were, we were, I thought, I always felt like we had a great balance. In April 1992, Darren Woodson was selected by the Dallas Cowboys as the 37th overall pick in the NFL draft. His mother, Freddie Luke, broke the news to him. That day, he said, mother, I cannot stay at home and wait on a phone call. And I said, I understand that. So he left and went to his girlfriend's house at the time and just kind of keep his mind off of what was going on. So when the phone call did come in, I was shocked. I got him on the phone. I said, you need to come home now because you have a flight you have to catch in about an hour, almost two hours. And he says, why? I said, because the Cowboys want you. And he, wow, couldn't believe it. Woodson went on to play for the Cowboys for his entire 12-year professional career, but first he had to get his diploma that May. Don Bakke explains what the moment was like for the student that couldn't get his grades right. He told me when he graduated, he said, Coach, my dream was always to get drafted into the NFL. He said, in April, I got drafted into the NFL. He said, the feeling I had was, was tremendous. He said, but it wasn't even close to how I felt when I walked across the stage accepted the diploma from Arizona State, and then handed it to my mother. It gives me goosebumps today. Woodson became an integral part of the Cowboys from the moment he arrived, playing on special teams and in third down situations, before becoming a starting safety his second year. His former teammate, Dale Hellestray, talked about how unique the start to his NFL career was. He got drafted, I mean, his first four years in the league, we won the Super Bowl, we won the Super Bowl, NFC Championship game won the Super Bowl. It's a heck of a way to start your career. Woodson went on to being named a captain of the Cowboys and finished his career as the all-time leading tackler in Cowboys history. He won his second Super Bowl title in Tempe against the Pittsburgh Steelers at Sun Devil Stadium. It was a very important moment for Woodson to celebrate those that helped him reach that point. I know I gave up about 25 Super Bowl tickets because I have so many teachers that I, that, that poured into me that, that I was going to give tickets to family and friends and to win that game in front of all them and just to celebrate, not just to celebrate the win, but just to celebrate life with them after that game was really important to me. After six years of being named an NFL Hall of Fame semifinalist and breaking through to become a finalist this year, Woodson was not selected for the 2023 class. Woodson is a member of the ASU Hall of Fame and the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor. He believes he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame at some point. I feel like I'm deserving of being in the Hall of Fame. I think I played at a high level. I have championship rings. I have all pros. And, and I deserve and feel like I, my name should be called at some point. Look, it's a process, and I totally understand the process, and I respect the process. For Woodson, it's more about being a representative of the defense that helped Dallas win those championships and those that helped him get to the NFL. I feel like I'm one of those guys who led this team for a long time that should have that opportunity as well to represent that, those, uh, that defense in the 90s. For Don Bakke, he believes Woodson is deserving not just because of Woodson's skill, but because of the type of person he is. Some players just play well. Some, some players play well enough and elevate the people around him. He was that kind of player, but never the kind of player that pounded his chest and had it be about him. Never. The type of player any team would want. In Tempe, Spencer Cheok, Cronkite Sports.